Eraser was made around 1997 and was distributed by Blaze. It is a Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn compatible light gun with motor driven force feedback. In Japan, the gun was also distributed by GameTech. Besides the shown camouflage version, there is also a black model. The Eraser's standout characteristic is its Heckland Koch MP5 inspired design, albeit one that has been super deformed in order to shrink the controller and make it cute. Not many companies use the full size MP5 as a design route, and besides the Eraser, just the first revision of the Xmod TV gun comes to my mind to do so. Usually, companies tend to copy the MP5K variant instead, as Namco did for Crisis Zone and Logic 3 did for the PX098 Assault Rifle, which I have shown in episode 149. The eraser feels solid and sturdy. The shell shows some nice details and two distinct surface finishes. The side picture is very faithful to the original and is enjoyable to use. The grip is blocky and rather thick, which gets fatiguing after long play sessions. A trapdoor in the fake magazine reveals a secret cavity. On the Blaze models, this cavity is usually glued shut. As with many Blaze products, the trigger actuates two distinct miniature micro switches. One controls the fire signal, and one is a clutchy solution to control the force feedback. As the two switches can't always be pressed at the same time, this practice is prone to either allow shots with failing force feedback, or to start feedback before shots are being registered. Most buttons are on the left hand side of the gun. The A button is right on top of the magazine and is labeled Special Weapon. Next to it is a latching switch to turn the force feedback on or off. B is right next to this button and is labeled Start. Having A and B sandwiching another, similar looking and feeling button was an annoyance to me, as I sometimes confused B and force feedback during play sessions. A and B have an unusually long travel for rubber dome buttons, but they register reliably. At the top of the handle piece is an ambidextrous lever, which is labeled manual reload. It actuates a push button switch, which briefly disconnects A and momentarily cuts off the light signal. Therefore, in time crisis like games, this button just works if going into cover is mapped to a normally open A. Similarly, in normal gun mode, the manual reload button alone won't do the job. But if it is kept pressed, Pulling the trigger will cause the gun to sense an off-screen shot event. On top of A is a selector switch for the fire modes. Normal, auto reload and auto reload plus auto fire are the available choices. The reload capacity is 6 shots, after which the gun reloads twice each cycle. On top of this switch is a latching button, which toggles between normal gun and gun con mode on the PlayStation. The gun will automatically change into virtual gun mode upon being connected to a Sega Saturn, no matter the button state. The force feedback is motor based. It is very loud, not very strong and rather slow. The mechanism is inside the grip, very close to the wall and thus the player can feel it pretty well. It is powered by four AA cells, which are inserted to the heel of the handle. Because of this questionable feedback control signal design, very short trigger strokes won't cause the mechanism to travel a full cycle, but instead just noisily turn on, start moving and come to rest again without a haptic event. A held down trigger will continuously engage the force feedback, no matter in which fire mode the gun was set up. In case you wonder how to do feedback signals differently, I would refer to episodes 130 and 214 in which I have developed own control circuits. In gun con mode, precision is good, but accuracy is bad. Yet worse, in this mode, the screen estate is very limited due to dead zones on all sides. The one on the left is just narrow, but the ones on top and the right hand side are significant. The dead zone, which I encounter at the bottom, is about one fifth of the screen height and affected gameplay immensely. In normal gun mode, the precision is very good and the accuracy is good. Just a single narrow dead zone at the top remains in this mode. On the Sega Saturn, there are no dead zones anymore. Accuracy and precision are both very good. Start is indeed mapped to start in this mode. In my opinion, the eraser is more of a showpiece and collector's item rather than a useful controller as for the uncomfortable handle and the inconvenient button placement. 
I wonder whether the manufacturer knew that they messed up gun con mode and then chose to print the normal gun mode labels onto the gun instead. I can recommend this controller to people who are fine with skipping gun con functionality and happen to be huge HKMP5 fans. I like the box design of early Blaze controllers a lot and this one is no exception. I think they are very exciting yet remain tasteful and informative. The front is notable for falsely referring to the controller as stunner gun in the warning disclaimer. I love how Blaze cited dubious verdicts of a PlayStation magazine on the back. It reminds us to stay honest in our reviews, as else even a quarter century later, people might still call us out for it. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.